Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the second general meeting. So we'll start with an announcement for Dr. Mahalska. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with my colleague, uh, Dr. Cecilia Chung. It's nice to see all of, I don't see everyone, but I see the onliners. Um, and I'm excited to work with you all um, as the Psychi faculty advisor. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any questions about your careers, your pathways at, in psychology and things like that. For today, one of the things that we wanted to tell you about um, that you might not know because the advertising is happening in parallel with some of the work that we're doing in Psychi uh, and in psychology. So in the event that you don't know, Dr. Chung and I are here to share with you a really great opportunity. Both um, her and I will be teaching two courses this summer. So summer session two, and this is part of the FLEET program. So for those of you who are unaware, this is the faculty-led education abroad program. There are many programs um, as, uh, as part of FLEET, but ours is the only one in psychology. And we're gonna be doing it jointly. Uh, both of us and Dr. Chung will uh, share with you in a moment um, some of what, uh, her class that she's planning. So we're doing a joint program. Both of us have collaborations in Hong Kong too. I will be teaching Psychology 161. I know some of you have taken it before with me. I know Abigail has taken it um, and I don't see people in the room, but I, uh, I know a bunch of people have taken Psych 161. For those of you who haven't, um, it's a class on socio-emotional development and I think that socio-emotional development, a lot of what we know is very Western-centric, very US-centric. So my goal in the Hong Kong program is to have students think more about cultural influences, cultural differences. Hong Kong is very exciting because it's very dynamic. Um, and so there's influences from, um, <clears throat> from within the peninsula, from mainland China, from the US. It's a very dynamic and historically important program um, country. And so I will be teaching Psychology 161 and um, Dr. Chang will tell you about her class as well. Um, the exciting thing is that we both have collaboration. So students would be taking, um, would be invited to, to visit other labs with us. So we would be going to research labs, looking to see like what research looks like in settings that are not uh, in the US, that are in Hong Kong. These are developmental labs. I have a collaboration on parenting interventions, um, thinking about how to foster self-compassion, how to foster empathy in kids. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. This is in summer session two, and I will post information um, about it in just a minute. And Dr. Chang can tell you a little bit more about her, her class and we're doing it jointly. So you'd be doing one class in the morning, one class in the afternoon, and then going with us to, uh, to the different research labs. Yeah, so thanks. Um, I guess it's my turn if it's okay for me to take over the microphone. Um, so um, hi everyone, I'm Cecilia Chung, um, you know, so um, um, I don't know if I can actually share my screen, is that allowed? Because um, I, I would like to actually show the poster uh, for this. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so let me just put this up for everybody. Um, so um, can you see something um, on your screen? Okay, great. Yeah, so this is the program that uh, Dr. Mahauska has been telling you about. So um, once again, uh, the program is a fleet program. So we're studying abroad. We're taking you uh, to, uh, you know, beyond Riverside, right? So we're actually uh, moving our classroom to, uh, in this case, uh, Hong Kong. Um, and so for my class in particular, we are, um, you know, this is a class on uh, development of uh, immigrant and ethnic minority youth. Um, so we'll be actually um, looking at both um, immigrants or immigration in the U.S. as well as in Hong Kong. Um, so um, because we'll be actually teaching this course in Hong Kong in that context, so uh, we're going to actually um, pull from some of the local materials, um, you know, local news and other things uh, to really enrich uh, your experience in this course. So um I know many of you or some of you uh, were looking forward to take uh, 165B this quarter, this winter quarter. Uh, unfortunately, it was canceled. So if you're still really interested in taking this course, um, here's your opportunity. Um, so summer two, I'll be offering it again. Um, so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I just don't want to take up too much time, but 
Um, here's also a uh, URL that you can go to. Um, so it's tinyurl.com slash flip Hong Kong. If you want to find out more about the program, um, check out the website um, or you can, um, you know, really feel free to reach out to me as well as Dr. Mahalska if you have any questions. All right, so I'll just stop here. Are there any questions? So we'll continue with the meeting. Great. Does anyone have any questions? Um, did anyone want to say something? So we have a boba tea house fundraiser, which is right now. Um, so yeah, scan the QR code to place orders, like if you would like to, and we can pick it, you can pick it up at the social. And make sure that you do it by 6.50 p.m. And um, make sure to make a payment and upload a receipt. So Divitha, we're going to maybe um, log out. If anyone has questions, you can feel free to reach out to me or to Dr. Chung or to the FLEET program. The uh, faculty advisor's name is Sonia Lint, and she's fa fabulous. Uh, would you be able to say that again? Sorry, it cut out. Oh yeah, I was just saying we're gonna um, we're gonna head out. But um, if anyone has questions, feel free to reach out to me or Dr. Chung. Um, it's gonna be a really fun program. There's also the Fleet program here. Um, Sonia Lint is the person to speak with. She's really fabulous. I'm happy to forward along any information, and then you can find more at the URL that Dr. Chung shared. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. We did again. <laughs> no, we're gonna move okay, on. We're, <laughs> we're just gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our next person presented in numerous research conferences and is pursuing an education specialist degree in school psychology. Research interests are to implement and develop mental health interventions for students with special needs within the K-12 environment through peer support and positive emotional coping strategies. Interested in studying mental health, well-being, and behavior support for students with special needs, they plan to pursue an EdD in educational psychology, and their current job title is an Ed as school psychology graduate student. Can you guess their minor? I have an obvious one in my mind, but I'm going to say sociology. No. <laughs> you guys should go with the obvious ones. I'm just saying. The first one was unreasonably hard. <laughs> yeah, they're real people. We found them on LinkedIn. We don't actually know them. <laughs> what did you say? It's education, yes. <laughs> so, this person drives data driven decisions. Their mission is to understand and enhance the emotional connection that guests have with the Disney brand products and services. They collaborate with cross-functional teams to design, execute, and present hypothesis-driven research projects that inform and influence business decisions across the company. They publish peer-reviewed articles on the psychology of privacy, trust, and emotions. They demonstrate expertise and leadership in the field. So their current job title is a senior brand strategy analyst at the Walt Disney Company. And this one's kind of hard. <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 So honestly, this guy, I don't really understand how the minor. <laughs> but um, okay, they. What's a good hint for this? Um. <laughs> no. Bio. No. Okay. I mean, um, they. Neuroscience. No, they must know a lot of rules. It starts with L. <laughs> law. Yeah. It's law. That's so funny. Because it helps. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For this person, they have experience in healthcare, law, and research. They're currently working in behavioral management while pursue while building a business and charity. Entrepreneurship has become an adventure. To, to this person, private practice in psychology or psychotherapy and counseling. So their current job title is a private practice in healthcare and charity founder, and they have two minors. Ooh, business? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> Think of the healthcare aspect. Bio. And? And business. One of them, you got bio, right? Chem. No. Chem. chem, yeah, it's bio and chem. <laughs> Okay. See how helpful minors are? So yeah, those are just some examples of people that had minors and how it helped them develop into their career path. And now we're going to move on to a panel with some of our members right here, and they're going to talk about their experience in minoring. There's one online. Hi, everyone. So we're going to start with the panel and we'll just start with introductions. So we could just go from left to right and that could be the order for the panel. So Natalie, do you want to go? Yeah, I can go first. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Natalie and I'm a current third year uh, psych major with a general business minor. Um, my current goal right now is to pursue marriage and family therapy. Do I have to unmute? Oh, okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ashley. I am a third year psychology major 
um, and I'm picking up a minor in neuroscience. Uh, my current career goals, I want to go into clinical psych, um, so grad school and all of that, um, and eventually work with patients kind of in my own little private practice. Um, yeah, thanks. Hi guys, my name is Prashanta Agarwal. Um, I'm a fourth year with a double in psychology and education with a minor in public policy. Um, it's all over the place, but I swear it makes sense to me. I'm basically, I'm really um, interested in working in higher education and organizations. So that's all the policy work, what goes into higher ed, how do we have that? So yeah. So thank you all. And now the next question is, how did you determine which minor to pursue? Um, I honestly had no idea I was going to pursue a minor. Um, my mom kind of told me to do it, and I was like, okay, cool. Um, but I think thinking more about it, um, I was planning, I was asking um, around how to make more money as a therapist. I know, like, the stigma against being a therapist is like you're making not that much money so that kind of scared me because I don't want to not make money um so I was told that opening up a private practice um in like Beverly Hills and like charging upwards $400 per session will make you money so I thought about what I needed to open a private practice and just kind of dipping my toes in business I thought that that would help a lot um so far I'm taking um, two business classes, and so far I'm kind of learning a lot, and I think it would help. So um, I chose the general business minor. Um, there's like, I think like seven or eight business minors you can choose from, and I did the general business one, and so far it's been super informational. Thank you. Okay, um, so I kind of went into undergrad knowing I wanted to do something with neuroscience, Originally, I was like, maybe I should double major, um, but I didn't want to do OCHEM and all that. So I was like, a minor's fine. Um, so I feel like psych and neuroscience are like pretty much sister subjects. Um, so like neuroscience is like brain stuff. Um, and there's a whole section of psych that is related to just the biology of stuff and how that affects behavior. Um, so there's like kind of that obvious attachment between the two. And then on top of that, um, there's this kind of therapy, it's called TMS, it's called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Basically, they just send mag magnetic waves into your brain um, to like stop or help activate areas that need their functioning to kind of be um, assisted. Um, and so in order to do that, you do have to have a background in neuroscience. So in terms of like career wise, it also has implications in that sense as well. Um, I think for myself, it was more of a question of um, what I was interested in. So basically, I was introduced to uh, one of my lower division education classes, and they really brushed over the policy aspect, but I loved it so much that I became interested. And then around the same time, while I was working in the STEM teaching and learning lab, we were discussing how uh, a lot of these basic lower level courses of like biology and chemistry, they tend to be coursework that builds a barrier for people to continue being in STEM fields. And I was more interested in the policy aspect of that. So that's why I was like, okay, might as well look into po political science or public policy. And I did my homework and public policy was a little bit less uh, courses to take so I could fit it into my four-year plan. So it looks like there's like different reasons to pursue a minor. So Natalie um, is pursuing it to enhance her career. And then there's also career reasons and also personal interests. So there's a good range. Um, so for a refresher for people, what steps did you take to apply for the minor? Uh, so I applied for the minor right before my third year, so this past summer. Um, so the core prereqs that you need for the class are BIS 20. It's an accounting course. 
Um, econ 3, I think that's either micro econ and then stat 8. But as psych majors, you're required to take psych 11, which is the stats procedures one. And that one can fulfill as a prereq instead of stat 8. So that, so I didn't take stat 8. I used psych 11 as like the substitute. Um, so those are the three prereqs you need. And then once you complete those three, um, you can submit like the new minor form to the School of Business. And then they will allow, they usually approve it. Um, my recommendation is if you're not minoring in accounting, and I usually think they probably won't let you take it at a CC if you are, but I took the Biz 20 class at um, CC and it was a lot easier. Um, there are bad things said about Biz 20 at UCR because it's just super hard, but I took it at CC and I'm not minoring in accounting anyway, so it was just something that I can use to kind of hurry up and declare my business minor. So kind of like what Natalie was touching on, um, for each of your minors, you're going to have kind of different requirements that you have to fulfill. And it'll be kind of like your major requirements, just a lot easier in fewer classes. So you have um, like your prereqs. I know for neuroscience, most of the classes you're taking are just prereqs to get even into even the classes that you need for your minor. Um, so that's something you also have to keep in mind. Um, and then you have like your core minor requirement classes and then elective minor requirements sorry, requirement classes. Um, so you actually take those classes before you even apply to your minor form. Again, kind of like what Natalie is talking about. Um, so I'm actually still in the process of picking up my minor. I'm like finishing up my last few classes. Um, so once you do get all your classes finished, you need to apply two quarters before you graduate. So if I'm graduating in summer, I need to have all of my classes done by the end of this quarter. So you have the two quarters um, and then you will talk to your academic advisor um, as well as your minor's academic advisor if it's outside of your school or yeah, it would still be different because you're minoring in a different field. So you would talk to them as well. Um, they basically will just have you fill out a form, they'll look over, they'll double check everything and then that's how you get your minor. So I feel like Natalie and Ashley covered the process pretty well. I think I'm just going to give a tip or two. And that would be uh, to look over your coursework and like the degree requirements, because uh, it made it easier for me to declare public policy, considering the fact that I happened to take two or three breadth courses that actually counted as lower divisions for the minor. And that speeded up the process of being able to declare it as a minor, but then having to essentially retake breadth courses to complete those initial requirements because they don't count for both. So, yeah. So the next question is, are there particular courses or topics within the minor that you found especially interesting? Um, yeah, I think currently I'm taking the more interesting ones. Uh, for general business, I think that the requirement wise is super easy. You only need to take four of the upper division core business classes. Um, if you have any friends in business, um, you probably hear that they have to take a class with a guy named Josu, and he writes like single space, 10 point font, two pages, like almost every single week. But um, that one's the marketing class. And then um, in terms of general business, I basically touch base with like a little bit of each like field of business. Um, so that class is interesting. I'm definitely learning a lot about marketing and it's a very interesting class, I would say. But I think as a psych major, the other class I'm taking, it's called organizational behavior. And it's a little bit like psych 142, which is the industrial organizational psych class. Um, it's definitely more psych related and more my thing. So I really like that class too. And it feels like I'm just taking another psych class. Um, but the harder parts are the other two that I have to take and it would be either like um, a more accounting based finance there's like another one um, and I'm not excited to take those but these two I feel like are the most interesting um, marketing and organizational behavior and I think that these two will definitely play into how I like go about my business hopefully um, in the near future when I have my own practice I will be definitely using like the strategies that they're teaching me um, in order to make my business prosper.
yeah so I would say that my favorite class I'm actually taking it this quarter it's I don't actually know what the name of the class is um but it's CBNS 120 it's basically just everything about action potentials um so if any of you have taken psych 110 it's like a deeper dive into that which I think is cool that there's a lot of overlap between psychology and neuroscience um like a lot of people will kind of double major or pick up a minor in the other um and you can see that in the classes it's really reflective it builds off stuff that you learn in psych um but yeah so this class nitty-gritty stuff about action potentials which I think is kind of it's cool to see like the fundamental building blocks of like everything like everything every behavior you do in psychology comes from an action potential so that's pretty cool and it also kind of brings it it's very like multidisciplinary um there's a little bit of physics in it there's a lot of chem in it there is a little bit of biochem too so you get really literally everything it's a super fun class and there's like a lot of variety and stuff that you learn. So I'm not trying to nerd out or anything, but I do want to say that the two um, classes I want to highlight from public policy was the prison industrial complex and then immigration and borderline um, issues, I think. I took, don't quote me on them, those two classes, I took them in like second year and they were absolutely amazing. And what I liked about it is that in public policy, there is so much overlap that even the final exam or the final project that you're working on can go into whatever you're interested in. So for example, the prison industrial complex, I got to explore how the prison system impacts women who are incarcerated for petty crime. That was my entire 10 week project that I got to work on. And then in, in the borderline and immigrations class, I got a chance to look into the policy of how um, children of color are taught ethnic studies in K through 12. So that was a huge chunk of that. And I think that's what I really like that it dived into, like it tied public policy into psychology and education, two things I really like. Thanks for sharing. It was nice to hear like your passion for your minors. So the next question is kind of relating it minors to majors. Have you found any unexpected connections or overlaps between your major and minor that have major and minor that have enhanced your understanding of both disciplines? Um, I think the class that I talked about, the organizational behavior one, is a clear overlap. We're talking about like psychological contract breaches at the moment. Super interesting topic, can't go into it um, too long. Uh, but I think it's super interesting how psych can be used in the business field. And I think if anyone is interested in working in the corporate world, or I think even HR, honestly, like people put a stigma on it, but there's so much that like psych can be applied to. And I think business is such a big factor in that because you work with so many people. Um, and I think that this class is super important. And I think this is the only class though that will overlap with psych at all. I don't see how my finance class is gonna overlap that heavily, um, but definitely this organizational behavior class is overlapping and I'm learning more with how like the two are blending together. And I think, like I said before, I'm definitely gonna use like these two classes, um, especially to kind of help run my business a little bit when I grow up. I would say the class that I've taken in neuro that's closest to psych is like the introductory neuro class. It's basically 110. Um, so again, there's a lot of overlap between the two fields, um, but you basically, so the first half of the course, you learn a little bit about action potentials. It's more like the molecular side of stuff. Um, and then the second half of the class, you apply everything you learn about action potentials um, to like neuro, neuronal circuits and how that influences behavior. Um, and so that has kind of direct implications within the field of psychology, um, especially if you decide to go on to treat individuals for their behaviors and such. Um, it's really good to have like that background baseline understanding of every single layer that gets you up to that point. So you're not just looking big picture, you kind of get the small nitty gritty details as well. So 
So not necessarily content being similar between public policy and psychology, they're very different. But I will say that both in public policy and in psychology, the skills that I've developed have given me an edge when it comes to writing papers and whatnot. And I only say that because, uh, for example, in public policy, there is such a huge emphasis on being able to do the literature review aspect of what we do in psychology for research papers, that those skills transfer um, a lot of times in psychology papers, I've found that I get praised for analysis, being able to tie it to something as in like, how does this impact people? How does this go further? That's the public policy aspect that I end up finding plans that government has put in place and tie those in. So. Yeah. yeah, it's great um, how like the content is not only over with labs, but can like help you with de developing skills for your future career. So how did you hope your minor, how do you hope your minor will help you in the future? Um, like I said before, just to give me an insight about the business aspect, um, I think if I'm gonna pursue therapy, I'm gonna learn how to like learn about my clients and build rapport with them and just kind of learn about them. But in terms of how to succeed on my own with like, I don't know, one of my goals is to be able to offer pro bono to clients who can't afford therapy at all. And I want to know how to be able to kind of be able to put food on my table, but also help people out still in the long run. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out that and like in terms of business and how that will kind of play towards my career path um, in a way that I can still be successful, like all the way, and in a way where I'm satisfied with my life. Um, from that, I will be able to fully help someone else um, 100%. So, yeah. I kind of touched on this in the beginning, um, but one of the forms of therapy that I'm interested in going into um, in my career is TMS. And so in order to get certified for that and to be able to be a technician and such, um, you do need a background in some kind of STEM related field. So it's a little more similar to med school, but it's like kind of a cop out if you don't want to commit. Um, but yeah, so because I want to pursue TMS, having that neuroscience background is less of a commitment than having to go through med school and take all these like difficult STEM classes. Um, so it's like, it's like an easier option. I feel like minors are just a really good backup plan. You don't have to commit to it as much. It's not as many units. Um, so yeah, for me, it's basically just to help in case and should I decide to choose to go down the TMS route. So I'd like to clarify that for psychology, I genuinely really appreciate how I got a chance to learn research. I love School of Ed, but don't get me wrong, they don't do a great job of teaching us how to do research or what, how to read research articles and whatnot. And psychology gave that to me. So moving forward, I am very interested in researching diversity, equity, and inclusion and seeing how those policy or how that research can impact policy for admissions in higher educational institutions. And so that's where I feel like that's my, that's the direction I'm heading in. And hopefully I'll be doing research on that one day and also presenting that research and changing policies based off of it. So, yeah. So a minor can really open pathways for you. What advice would you give undergraduates pursuing a minor? Um, I think definitely start researching which minor you're interested in. Um, like Ashley mentioned, you have to like finish it like two quarter or the two quarter thing. I did it pretty early, so I'm not too worried about that. But I think definitely start researching something that you're interested in. Um, I guess just like differences if like how much it affects your psych major. Um, I definitely am using business to kind of push and like kind of mold together and be kind of a like a unified major minor thing but 
Um, you can apply psych anywhere. So if there's anything that you're interested in, whether it be history, public policy, neuro, or business, or anything like that, um, like just start researching because I think the later you research and the later you have to collect all these prereqs, um, the more challenging it's gonna be and the more stressful it's gonna be. So I think if you want, just go home and like go online, go go search up like, I don't know, business minor and just see what they have to offer. And then go from there, see like what courses you have to take and what professors usually teach them and then see if that's something you wanna try. Um, and maybe you take like an intro class and see if it's something you'd be interested in. And if not, you can back out. But definitely start now. And I think um, there is a time limit when you get to like third year or fourth year. So um, definitely start thinking about it. And if you're first or second year, take that to your advantage and just start researching minors. Yeah, so I feel like it kind of depends on where you are in how set you are on the career you want to go down. If you're kind of like me, you go into it, you're like, this is kind of a cool topic. Um, I would say start as soon as possible. Really take the time to like organize it. Um, what helps for me was I made basically a four year plan my first year, which was a little silly and obsessive because um, classes change. But it helps you to get a sense of how things are going to fit around so you can plan roughly for that. Um, so I think definitely like plan ahead, organize, um, schedule a meeting with your academic advisor or your minor advisor, just so you guys can figure it out, um, have some sort of plan for you. Um, but there is no stress to kind of have that already figured out. Um, I would say like worst case, a minor will take you two years max. And that's like, that's like the far end. If you're lucky to where your minor kind of fits into the classes you've already taken, it could take a lot less than that. So there is no rush to do it. Um, you definitely have time to figure it out. And especially if you're planning ahead, like it's, you'll be fine. You'll be all right. Um, so you don't have to go into it already knowing it. But yeah, it's just kind of a different approach depending on where you are in your career. Um, but yeah, again, kind of piggy piggybacking off of Natalie. Um, it's just really important to be able to kind of know what you want to do. Um, and it's also helpful to have that kind of assist you in your career. Ashley, it is absolutely not obsessive to make a four-year plan. <laughs> that is a great idea. It's something that our first, like our lower division education classes, they make us do. And I, I really appreciate it because regardless of whether you're fourth year, you're third year, if you're about to graduate, that's okay. It's never too late to make a one-year plan or two-year plan, whatever you need. Um, I highly recommend it. And I also do, I am a strong believer that if you are a first or second year where you're taking breadth courses, use that to your advantage and start basically testing the waters for minors that you are interested in because those lower divisions are typically breadth courses. So if you test the waters and you like something, then you can always retake. Again, I did it out of just coincidence but I think if you really plan ahead and take advantage of that then that can work for uh, like work for you rather than against you um yeah and what are the positive and negatives of having a minor um when I did my accounting class it was like completely online didn't talk to anyone and I thought I was going to be chilling but when I finally took like the business operative that I was gonna take. Um, I think the biggest thing I had was imposter syndrome. Uh, one of my roommates is um, a business major and um, she's graduating early and we're taking the same class. And I literally got so scared the night before this quarter started. I was super scared I was gonna fail that like maybe psych and business weren't as similar as I thought it would be or that the course load was gonna be super hard because 10 points single space, two pages is with justified margins oh my gosh it scared the living crap out of me but um I think like that imposter syndrome kind of set in and I it drove me to like put that much more effort into the class um but I think the more attention that I give to it the more I'm actually seeing how I can use that in my future and I will continuously be scared for whatever the class has to throw at me and the future classes have to throw at me because I'm not a business major but I think in the end the positive is that um, it will help me 
overall. Um, kind of dip my toes in it and obviously not give me all the things that I need to know about it, but I think I will enter like the want to create like my business, um, just feel a little bit more confident maybe down the road. Um, but just now, maybe you may or may not um, experience imposter syndrome, but it's kind of it's kind of wearing off and I feel a little bit better, but that was like kind of the first things that I experienced when I took on the minor. I would say pro, like biggest pro is kind of everything we've talked about today. Um, like it can help widen the opportunities that you want to go into. Psych is literally like anywhere, anywhere you can apply. It's literally, you can find a job if you have a psych major. Um, so it's just helpful to kind of have that background as well. If you want to go into a specific field or to keep your horizons very broad in case you don't know what you specifically want to do. Um, so I would, I would say that's the biggest pro. Um, the con. If you're doing something in a different school, it's very, very difficult to get seats to classes because you don't have priority for them. Um, so that gets very, very frustrating. And going back to my original point, organization, planning ahead, very important when stuff like this happens. Because I, I literally had to wait a whole year to sign up for introductory classes. So pushed my whole schedule back, but it's okay. We planned, <laughs> we made it out alive. Honestly, yeah, Natalie and Ashley covered everything pretty well in terms of what could go wrong is pretty much the answer is everything. Everything could go wrong. Um, but despite that, I feel like with the with my minor, I don't think it was necessarily it was about getting the classes I wanted rather than meeting the requirements on time. So that took a lot of persuasion and filling out forms of like, please let me in. <laughs> I know I'm only a second year, uh, but I think it's worth doing that, especially because, um, again, I kind of think about it. And if I didn't figure out that public policy would be my minor or I was never interested in it, never brought it up, I have no idea what kind of person I'd be today and where I'd be heading after undergraduate. So, yeah. That was actually the last question. So thank you for taking your time to come here and especially like nearing midterm season. And it's really nice that you all have like different minors and you have like different experiences. So you could really show like um, the different uses of a minor and how you can like, whether you wanna like do something more specific in psychology or like learn something new. So yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Oh, <laughs> wait, but they won't be able to hear the Can question. Can you repeat the question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so someone asked a question basically like when, <laughs> yeah, basically about prereqs um, and like what the classes you have to take in order to be able to file for a minor. Um, so if you actually go into our web, and you go to like the what if, you can put a minor that you want and it'll show the core classes that you have to take. And it's kind of like with psych, how you have um, like 110, 150, 140, all those classes. And then you have the elective classes like abnormal, clinical, IO, stuff like that. So it's kind of similar for my major at least. Um, I have my core neuro classes and then my elective neuro classes. The core ones are set, I have to take them in order to get the minor. The electives, I only need six to eight units or something like that. Um, and I can just choose whichever class I want. And some of them aren't even neuro classes. Um, but yeah, it's all on your R web. You'll see that. For the prereqs, that's something that you will have to look. So basically, you'll look at your core classes that you have to take, and then you'll click on each class and see what the prereqs are for those. Um, so for example, CBNS 106 Intro to Neuroscience is the first core class you have to take, and it's the prereq for all other neuro classes. The prereq for that is the entire Chem 1 series and most of the Bio 5 series. Thankfully, not physics. But um, so those are the prereqs, and that would be something that you would have to look. Um, you can definitely do it yourself if you're not very comfortable or you would just like some assistance. Um, that's when the academic advisor would come in. Mm -hmm. 
I think my advice is going to show you how obsessive I was. Um, I took the course catalog, took all the upper division public policy classes, copied and pasted it onto a document and went through each and every one. Which ones can I do without needing a prerequisite course? There were some that were just like, you need to be a junior, senior standing. Those are the ones that I kept an eye out for who's teaching it, what's going on, making sure to email them before registration opens, getting permission and all that. But I think honestly, anything you put your heart or mind to will require effort. And that's the kind of effort that that takes. If you're interested in a minor, stop hesitating. Start taking those lower divs, look into whether or not you like it, and then figure out what classes you're interested in taking as well. I think I kind of got lucky because a lot of the public policy classes are, um, they range their ethnic studies, their, um, for some reason, some of the education classes count to uh, anthropology, sociology. So there was a wide variety of things I could choose from. And there were public policy, sorry, there were upper division classes that didn't have prereqs to them, which is what made it easier to do. <laughs> and Natalie, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I guess for business, it honestly, it was kind of easy because um, they only required three prereqs. I honestly don't remember if Biz 20 had one, but Econ 3 was just like a class that I needed for my GE anyway. Um, and then Stat 8 was fulfilled by Psych 11. So pretty much those two were already filled. So the only thing I did was take Biz 20 over the summer and that opened the gateway to Gen Biz, which is the one I have. Accounting, Biz Analytics, Finance, IS, management or uh, another management they have like two management ones um marketing and they have an operations one so if you don't just take those three classes it opens up you can just submit the form and then boom you have like eight different like minors to choose from um but i will say that for general business it is the most concise one they offer you five options and you have to pick four the other ones have like 10 electives that you can choose or like 10 electives to choose from and you'll have to pick two so take that with what you will but um i think like declaring the minor for business is super easy in my opinion and does anyone have any last questions or comments oh yeah <laughs> so no in all honesty I um I peer advise a lot of students so throughout majors it just depends on what you're interested in typically if they're very uh organized it'll be on their website what order to do that in so for example uh with public policy and education they're they share the same office at that time or they did at that time so they were kind of just like oh okay as long as you tell your advisor <laughs> just let the other advisor for public policy know. And then the advisors ended up speaking to one another and they had me sign one document. But with other majors, it can be the opposite where it's like you first need to formally meet the advisor via an appointment, get a hold of a Google form or a form that they have, um, fill out that form, send it back and all that like conversation via email. Um, I think I've only heard of like one case where they first expect you to fill out the form and then go and meet them in person and let them know like, hey, I filled out the form. What are the next steps? And, you know. For the upper divisions, yes. You can still take the lower division courses and um, have those ready to go. And that's the thing. It depends. You should check the website because... Um, I, originally, I was actually going to be a psychology minor rather than a double. And for the psychology thing, they were they wanted me to fill out the lower, like complete the lower divisions. And then on the form, they had me fill out that which lower divisions I had already taken. So it just depends on what the what your primary major is and what the minor is that you're applying for. It depends again for psychology or chess, it, it, my AP credits did count. So, or they counted more. I don't know what that was about, but <laughs> no, it was kind of weird. Uh, School of Education was like, no, we don't want these. But um, so that was also something that I had to put on the form rather than talk to them about. Um, but yeah, it just depends. Mm -hmm.
So I think we'll end the panel over here, but yeah, definitely maybe like if you're guys open to like to send contact information and we'll probably do that in the email. Um, so thank you. So we'll go to updates now. So we have officer applications open now. So if you're interested, you could see the guidelines and the application to apply. And the deadline is February 16th at 11.59 p.m. And also we added a new position this year, which is called project, project director. So this is more general and kind of like helping like every position in a way with an additional focus on raffles and giveaways. Um, and kind of a few other things that I can't remember, but they're on the guidelines. <laughs> so program coordinator applica applications are also open right now. And Abby, do you want to do this? Okay. <laughs> um, so our program coordinator applications are open. I really don't have much more to add. Um, so if you really want, if you want to run the first year lay member program, you can definitely talk to me and Ashley. Um, or also MP, you can talk to Cameron and Gemma, or if you want to be our community promoter like Ulysses is. Um, these are really great positions, so if you want to apply for those, it's great and exciting and amazing. You can also do these in conjunction with a board position if you'd like to do that. Um, there are some that are an exception, but those are all on the information sides. So you can um, apply there with the QR code and then the information is um, there. We also have a quick announcement from Flimp really quick, if actually you want to okay. announce our event so we are holding an event this thursday in two days um <laughs> at 6 30 p.m in a room that i do this not know. room this room in this room um and we're holding a mock interview an interview workshop so basically um we are going to be kind of showing you what to look for what 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 people <laughs> when you're being interviewed what your interviewer is looking for in you um, and kind of applying that to research positions on campus, off campus, internships, which is really cool because that season is, we're in the midst of it right now. So it's very applicable. Um, and we'll be having prizes. We're gonna be doing a little bingo board just to make sure you're paying attention. Um, you're gonna get a cute little push. And then we're gonna do mock interviews, which is super, super helpful. It's really good to practice a skill that you wanna get good at. Um, so yeah, we're in, opening this up to all of Psychi, even if you aren't in Psychi, just really anyone. <laughs> anyone who wants to come and learn about interviews can come. Um, again, it'll be two days from now, Thursday, in this room at 6.30 p.m. So please come. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a great opportunity and a great um, example of the amazing work that our program coordinators are doing. So the applications close February 16th. Yay! <laughs> And we also have another application open and as if there wasn't enough, right? <laughs> um, so we have a co-director position. So there's the guidelines and the application. Our psych is one of our biggest events. It's an annual research conference. So you can kind of help with directing the committee heads and more activities with the team. So applications are due earlier. So February 12th at 11.59 p.m. And of course, Charity Miles. So it ends this Friday, but you could still sign up because you're still making money at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's instructions on how to join. And <laughs> Let's talk PwC for just one moment before we leave off today's general meeting. Uh, if you can hear me over Zoom, thumbs up. If you can hear me in person, I know you can because you're listening. So what do we have for PwC? We have two opportunities available. We have camp leader volunteers, and we also have our life panelists. So eligibility requirements, what are they? Anyone is able to apply, regardless of your status in Saikai, regardless if you're an official a prospective member or you're just a passerby, those of you passing by back there and your class standing, right? Doesn't matter. 
what are the event dates? Saturday, March 2nd and Sunday, March 3rd. That's the day that will host PwC. It is a virtual high school outreach program. So keep in mind, you're not going to be at UCR on Saturday and Sunday, but if you'd like to be, they have stable Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I, I couldn't even hold that in. I agree. <laughs> Wi-Fi can be hit or miss. But what do these two positions entail? Well, our life panelists, you're speaking on behalf of your experiences as a UCR student. So maybe you might be speaking on reasons for applying to UCR, why you chose UCR in particular, experiences living on and off campus, extracurricular activities, like your membership in Unsaikai, or uh, <laughs> becoming involved with research labs as Ashley did mention before. And if you participate in the panelists, it's only one hour of the entire duration of the event. So you don't have to be there for both days. However, it's only worth one activity point. If you'd like to earn three activity points, mind you, we have camp leader volunteers. So what are your responsibilities of camp leader volunteers? You're gonna be directing, interacting with a group of high school students. So you'll be choosing a grade level, either ninth, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. And again, this will be a virtual program on Zoom. So you don't actually have to be there with them physically, but over Zoom. You're gonna create, plan and enable group activities and icebreakers. We do have a guideline of what that looks like on the form. So if you scan that QR code right over there, or for those of you on Zoom, uh, you're also gonna initiate and facilitate group discussions. Lead by example, of course, you're gonna be positive and uplifting to uh, the high school students. And remember the initiative of PwC is to encourage them to apply to higher education. So that means community college, that means four year universities, and you're going to be uh, attending PwC for the entire duration of the event. So that includes, yes, Saturday and Sunday, and you'll be earning three activity points. We have deadlines for both. Uh, deadline for, let me see here, sorry. Deadline for the Our Life panelists is Friday, February 9th by 11.59 p.m. And then the deadline for camp leader volunteers is Sunday, February 11th at 11.59 p.m. And that's my TED Talk. And we have member highlights. So this is also Elise's idea. So um, if you want, if you're an official member, you'll be able to do this. So you can kind of write like important experiences that you have contributed um, that are related to psychology. And we can highlight you in the winter quarter newsletter. And the deadline is February 19th. Uh, we had our lovely historian work on the form. Uh, focus, excuse me. Work on the form for these membership highlights. So, if you would like to highlight anything that you're doing on campus, it can be related to psychology. It can be related to uh, research labs. If you have anything that you want to highlight about yourself, I do recommend filling this form out. Um, the due date is a couple weeks from now. But um, if you have any questions of like what's available to be highlighted, you can reach out to either Vanessa or myself. So any questions, please do ask after or any time in between. And we also have a Krispy Kreme fundraiser that ends Thursday, March 14th. Um, so the usual for Saikai, and there's more instructions here. Is that a dollar a donut? Yes. <laughs> Wait, let's lay. I should buy. He's busy. You're busy. You're busy. You're busy. You're busy. You're busy. <laughs> so we'll actually get started with the social now so it's mafia night and board games <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>